Hey guys, I hope all is well. Welcome back to the Truth Talk Podcast. I'm back here with Taco. Hey everyone. In today's episode, we will be talking about the Netflix show called The Fall of the House of Usher. Let's get right into it. It's not hard to tell just by looking around that our world is controlled by men who have no souls. Men who have sold out long ago on their pursuit of wealth and power. These men behind the scenes are who shaped our world today, rigging the system to their liking. Demons who call themselves bankers and investors who have sold our people out in order to maximize their returns. Their happiness comes at our torment. Those elite at the top of the pyramid have chosen our fate for us, sacrificing us for their worldly gains. This is exactly what this show, The Fall of House of Usher, is all about. The show, The Fall of House of Usher, shows us exactly how these elite are built up, and they reveal to us the price for ultimate wealth and power. In today's episode, we will be exposing how this show hides the truth in plain sight about the world elite and how they got to be the elite. I want to warn you guys, there will be spoilers ahead. The show The Fall of House of Usher is about an elite billionaire family, how they got their unnatural wealth, and what caused their eventual downfall of their empire. The story follows Redrick and Madeline Usher, who were the secret children of a billionaire who owned the pharmaceutical company Fortunato. After the billionaire was killed by Roderick and Madeline's mother, both Roderick and Madeline were living miserable lives working at a lower level in the company. This led the pair to come up with a plan to take over the company their fathers built. This is when Roderick and Madeline decided to eliminate their boss over at the company by trapping him inside a wall that was being built and being left to perish. The same night they did this, they went to a nearby bar in order to establish an alibi for themselves. While there, they met a woman who was serving drinks at the bar. They ended up having a conversation with this woman who out of nowhere told them she knew what they had done to their former boss. After saying this, the mysterious bartender offers Roderick and Madeline an unbelievable offer they couldn't refuse. A deal that would grant them unlimited wealth, power, and guaranteed them they would take over the company their fathers created. The mysterious woman even promised they wouldn't face any problems with the authorities for taking out their boss. All this mysterious woman wanted in return was for Roderick and Madeline to sacrifice any and every child they had to her. This meant that any child either of these two made were going to pass away. Roderick almost immediately took the deal without even asking further questions, and so did Madeline. The story then fast forwards to the current year where Roderick and Madeline have become billionaire elitists, ruling over the ultra-successful Fortunato Pharmaceutical Company. Roderick ended up having six kids, while Madeline chose to not have any. Just like the woman told Roderick, he started losing all his children one by one in a two-week span as they all got into some sort of freak accident. His youngest son Perry passes away after a freak accident takes place at a private club he created for the rich. Somehow, acid rain falls from the ceiling of the club, taking out all those who went to that club. His daughter Camille then passes away after being mauled by monkeys at an experimental lab owned by the family. His son Napoleon dies after falling over the balcony in his high-rise. His daughter Victorian takes herself out after having a breakdown in front of her dad. His daughter Tamlin goes after she shatters a mirror above her bed, which causes a giant piece of glass to land right on her. His oldest son Frederick goes out in the same building as his youngest son Perry. This time, he is crushed inside the building after he orders it to be demolished while he's still in it. Roger Kidd's death all had one thing in common. The woman that Roderick and Madeline made a deal with in the bar years before was there each time. She watched each one of his children pass away. In the scene with Perry, she is the last one to talk to him before the acid rain falls. When Camille passes away, the woman is there and acts as a security guard who lets her in. She then becomes the chimp that attacked her. The woman was also present when Napoleon fell over the balcony as she became the veterinarian who gave him the cat that he had got from a shelter after he accidentally took out his boyfriend's pet cat. Victorine was also being messed with by the mysterious woman who pretended to be her test subject for the medical equipment she was creating. The medical equipment had proven not to work properly, but with Victorine's obsession with making the equipment work, she decided to move on to human trials even though it could be dangerous for whoever it is tested on. The test subject ends up being the mysterious woman from the bar, which leads to Victorine's eventual passing. Tamerlan also has her meeting with the mysterious woman after she hires her to sleep with her husband as she watches. Frederick is literally taken out by the woman who tricks him into taking a sedative and then uses his voice to order the building's demolition to begin. After each of the kids are taken out, then Madeline was next, and Roderick being the last one to go. The woman who gave everything to the ushers years back came to collect the souls she was promised. She took out the entire bloodline and used them to gather even more souls. In the show, Roderick Usher was approached by the devil to make the deal of his life. He and his sister took the deal and traded their souls to have the world. He became the CEO of the biggest pharmaceutical company, and his company was responsible for millions of lost lives, as the medication made by his company was highly 
pretty addictive and destroyed anyone who used it. So not only did he sacrifice all his children, but he also sacrificed millions of lives. This series showed us a glimpse at how the elite families who are on top of our world truly get it all. The reason what they do is evil is because evil is behind them. They showed us exactly what they had to do to have ultimate power. They had to make an ultimate sacrifice. Roderick sacrificed himself and all of his kids to the devil to have the world. Then the devil gave him what he wanted, but only to use him to sacrifice more people. The devil then came and collected all those souls. Many people have heard about celebrities striking a deal with the devil for fame and fortune. This series shows us is no different with the elite of our world. In one scene in the series, they show the mysterious woman in photos with the elite of our world hinting at the fact that the devil is behind the elite bloodlines. They show her alongside people like Donald Donald Trump and his father, Prescott Bush, the Rockefeller family, the Vanderbilt family, and even Mark Zuckerberg showing us exactly who's behind these elite families. They love hiding the truth in plain sight, and that's exactly what they did with the scene. One scene that stuck out to me as well was the scene where Roderick and Madeline put their boss inside the wall in order to take his place. This was the first sacrifice they made, and this is when the mysterious woman who's supposed to represent the devil shows up to make the offer. The devil saw then that they were willing to sacrifice a life to have what they wanted. This is how the devil knew it could convince them to sell their souls. Another scene that caught my attention was the scene where Perry gets eliminated as they show us their private parties for the elite. All the elite showed up to the party with mask on and it was supposed to end up being a giant orgy party. Just like it was shown in the movie Eyes Wide Shut. Parties like this are going on at those Hollywood mansions that everyone has heard of. At these parties is where these stars end up being made. Not only strange activities end up happening, but also occult rituals and even sacrifices. This is how the elite likes to party. They wear masks to hide from each other, so no one knows what they're doing. This show is a definition of hiding the truth in plain sight. It showed us exactly what these billionaires have to do to make it in positions and to make it to the top. Yeah, it's interesting what you say there about hiding the truth in plain sight. It looks like they're trying to make it funny, you know? The, the scene, I think, in the sixth episode where they show the pictures of the Verna, the character Verna, with all these other figures in the past who have been known to do things that have hurt society or have hurt humanity as a whole and shows her in every single one of those scenes. It kind of implies that everyone's been making a deal to get the wealth and to get the fame and everything they wanted. Exactly. And we see that same theme everywhere. And it's not going to be the same with the elite of our world. They have to do it at a different scale. Roderick had to sacrifice each one of his kids. And if he would have kept having kids, he would have just kept sacrificing more kids. And that probably would have been the only way to keep him alive. And it's interesting how they show her with all these people from the real world, like you said, insinuating that these people also sold out. If we look at them now, they're in positions of high power, like Mark Zuckerberg. We were just talking about Mark Zuckerberg the other day, building this doomsday bunker underneath his $200 million home in Hawaii. This show wants us to know that he is one of those same people that cut a deal with the devil. Who knows what he is sacrificing? His deal with the devil obviously has a price, just like we saw with Roderick. When I first saw this show pop up on Netflix, I knew that it was based off of Edgar Allan Poe's work. I remember reading before about Edgar Allan Poe, and there were rumors that he wanted to be a Freemason, but kept getting denied due to his profession and rumors that he was an alcoholic. I found that interesting in the show, how they did a modern, a modern spin. For example, how they tied Roderick's fame and wealth to the lives of millions, if not billions of people. He had to pay the ultimate price to live the life that he wanted to live. Not only did he sacrifice his children, which were near and dear, he also sacrificed a bunch of innocent people. And the way this show portrayed it, it kind of opened my eyes to the fact that we really aren't in control. There could be someone else out there making deals to benefit themselves that will affect all of us. Yeah, the whole entire concept of Roderick, if we look at it, that's basically the prototype of a pharmaceutical company. Profit over people, you know, as make as much money as possible. It doesn't matter if you know the consequences of what you're pushing. And that's exactly what Roderick is doing. But it's interesting the way they present this to me. It's very interesting because they let you know that it's not just business evil. It's not just evil in the business world that's driving Roderick. It's actual pure evil. It's the devil himself. He made a deal with the devil. And that's why he is so overtaken by greed that he's willing to sacrifice anyone and everyone. And he did that the moment he put his boss behind the wall. He continued to do that the moment he had children, knowing that he was essentially sacrificing them. And he did that all the way to the day he passes away in the show. And I understand that this is a show, but we know that Hollywood loves hiding the truth in plain sight. And this is exactly what they did with this show. Roderick represents every single CEO at a pharmaceutical company today. 
they know they're destroying so many lives, but they're making so much money under this guise, under this false label that they're helping the world, when in reality, they're only helping their pockets get fatter. And that all ties into the type of system, the type of world we live in. Our world has been set up to be just like this. I've spoken about it. If you saw my last Patreon video, then you know I always mention the fact that we are set up to have a fixed lifespan. We're fed the food, given the products, and set up on this life that we're only working for the elite, putting more money in their pockets. And then by the time we're 60, 65 and we retire, we only have five to 10 years to actually enjoy the rest of our lives before the complications start coming in, the medical complications. And this is tied directly to companies like these. These billionaire companies, specifically these pharmaceutical companies, have been known to do just that. It's interesting you say that because sometimes I like to think that we're given the illusion of choice where you mentioned like the food that we're giving, the medicine that was provided to us to keep us alive. It's technically all poison, but we have the illusion of choice because some might say, well, you know, you have access to healthy food, but do you really? The healthiest foods, the organic foods are typically the most expensive. They have barriers that are difficult to obtain where the bad foods, think of like fast foods, foods that are bad for you that overall are detrimental to your health and to your longevity in life. They're easily accessible. You can find a McDonald's, for example, within five miles of any home in the United States. And that's a fact. You can look it up and the food is relatively affordable. Whereas if you go to a market, not all markets have organic food or food that doesn't have pesticides. So it's kind of like an, another truth hidden in plain sight. It's the illusion of choice that we're fed. That food is connected directly to the pharmaceutical company because it's almost like a yin and a yang, you know, the heads and the tails on the coin. They're connected. What you eat now is what's going to make sure that you need pharmaceuticals in the future. They are connected. They're the ones that set this all up and they're invested in each other. I'm pretty sure those that are invested in pharmaceutical companies are most likely the same people that are invested in these fast food restaurants. Because why not? Why wouldn't you invest in a fast food restaurant if you know this fast food restaurant is going to help you in your even bigger business later on, which is your pharmaceutical company? That's exactly what underlines this show. This show shows us that. It shows us there's one scene in the show where right before Roderick is about to be taken out, he looks out the window and the devil shows him all the people that he has sacrificed and they're literally falling out of the sky. It was raining people and he just sits there and witnesses it all. And I don't even think they want him to seem like he cares in the show because he doesn't really show any remorse. And that's also the American dream. You know, that's the corruption of America. Step on the little one, use them to get yourself up. Use the people at the bottom to climb your way out of it. And that's why America is so lost today. That's why these devils can be freely walking around and doing what they want. And no one questions it because instead of reprimanding them and pointing them out, they want to be like them. They want to join them. They want to be the next Roderick. They're willing to sacrifice their family as long as they can have it all and they can live that rapper lifestyle or live that baller lifestyle they've always wanted, you know? Exactly. Like you said, the things that are glorified in our society more often than not are people who are gang members, people who glorify violence, who glorify all the things that are meant to hurt society as opposed to help it. For example, I guarantee you, if you go to a the neighborhood where you and I grew up and you ask a kid who a famous physicist is or who the last Nobel Prize winner was, they'll look at you like you're crazy. Where if you ask them who NBA Youngboy is, I guarantee you they'll name one or two of his songs. Exactly my point. This show shows a representation of our entire society. Every single person will probably do the same as Roderick in our current society. They will probably choose the same choice if they were offered that ability. You understand? Because everybody only cares about themselves. The biggest problem that we're all going to have is being selfish. That's what separates us from being God. God showed that he was willing to sacrifice himself as Jesus Christ so the rest of us can live. He was willing to take our punishment for us. Most people can't do that. Most people won't sacrifice themselves to save others. That's the limit for people. The moment that is harming them, they're not going to go through with it. They're going to choose their own safety and their own lives. And that's what I mean. That's what separates us from a God. But in our current society, taken to a whole new level where it's not just about survival where you pick yourself. It's about picking yourself because you want to have it all. While this show is based off of fiction, we do see a lot of similarities to the real world. And it really is sad because it paints a really ugly picture. When you talk about pharmaceuticals and you see the mountain of bodies that we're stacking up at the end, that's something that really happened that many people lived through, you know? Yeah, that's something that happens every day. And then that's promoted through the music industry. Rappers like Future, who himself admitted, oh, I don't even really use substances like that. He raps about it all the time. He raps about popping this and popping that. 
that and doing that while he wasn't doing it. Just like we saw with the private prison industry, I believe it's the same way. I believe that those in the pharmaceutical companies found their way in the music industry, investing in artists, investing in labels, and these labels are using their artists to promote their pharmaceuticals. That's why we see people rapping about taking all these substances like Future did and not even taking them. Because Future knows it's poison, but he can push poison to his people as long as he can sell more records and make more money. That's like literally the exact same thing Roderick did, just in a sense of music. He was ready to sacrifice all these patients that took his medication, making them hooked on it so he can sell more medication and make more money. Future was willing to push this image so that they can push his music and put his music out there more and he can grow a bigger fan base and make more money. We have to stop sacrificing others for our gain. And that literally is another way of selling your soul to the devil. The moment you're willing to put money over someone's life and well-being, you've sold your soul. No ifs, ands, or buts, you know? This show might have just appeared like a TV show and most people watched it as just that. But that's the thing. Hollywood loves hiding the truth in plain sight. And we saw so much of that in this series. But I'm going to end it here, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for stopping by. I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you, everyone. Take care.